In this masterclass, we are going to be making a classic eye, and this is the eye that I use on a lot of the animals I create. Not so much on the on the people or the fairies or anything like that, but certainly dogs, rabbits, mice, cats, all those kind of animals, I use this eye technique and it works really well. So the key thing to remember first of all is that you want to have your nose in place first because that gives you a really good guide as to where you want to place your eye. So I've already added one eye in here, and as you can see here, I've I've shut I've shaped it so that you've got um, a lot of depth to it, and you've also got this kind of almost or sad kind of looking eye, which again gives that lovely cute look where it kind of goes upwards towards the towards the nose and then goes down on an angle as it goes downwards. So we're going to add the other eye now and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. So the first thing you want to do is create a lot of depth, the eye socket if you like. So I'm going to take my medium twisted cross star needle and I'm going to create um, a divot within our face which is probably going to be about half a centimetre in depth. Um, and we want it to be roughly the same sort of circumference as the eye I've already added. So I've got my brown merino roving wool here. I'm just going to roll it into a ball. I'm trying to get a similar amount to the amount that I've already added in the previous eye. And I'm just going to roll it with my thumb and my finger and then add it into the socket. It's always good to start off with less and then you can add more in as you go. Especially when you're doing the second eye and you're trying to match it up to the first eye rather than adding in too much. So go in with less initially if you're not sure and then you could always add a little bit more in as you go. So the first thing you want to do is we want to really stab this in and get a nice circular shape with our eye because you always want to start off with a circle. You want to get that circular shape and ideally do both eyes at the same time so then you can work out exactly how you want to shape both of those eyes. But you want to get a lot of depth here as well so really felt it in deeply. So we've got a lot of depth to our eyes so it's not just kind of on the surface, it's not linear, it's got some shape to it and it gives it that element of realism. So really stab it in, and then once I've stabbed it in, I'm gonna then start to shape it. I'm just gonna push this out a little bit here to create that circular shape. And just go really careful when you're doing this with your needle, because you don't wanna snap your needle, so always be cautious. So I'm just pushing the brown inwards, just to get that circular shape. And now I've got that circular shape, what I wanna do now is start shaping it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push upwards, with my needle to push up the inner upper corner of the eye like I have done on the opposite side. So I'm just going to very, very carefully push the brown into the white, as you can see here, using that medium needle. And just do it really gradually, and then just every now and then, just take a little look, just to make sure that it's matching the same, the same side, sorry, matching the side on the other side, if that makes sense. And then I'm just using my needle just to, to manipulate the wall and push, push it into the areas I want, to, want it to go. It's almost very much like painting, but rather than moving the paint around like you would with a canvas, you're moving the coloured wool around on whatever it is that you're felting. And in this case, we are moving the wool around on our animal's head. And you just want to keep going until you've matched both eyes up. They're both looking symmetrical. And this can take a bit of time to match up, so just... Just be patient, don't feel like you need to rush it. And then once I've pushed up that inner corner, I'm then gonna push down the outer corner, again in this downward shape, to bring the eye downwards and give that lovely, cutesy, slightly sad look. So you've almost got, an, kind of almost like a diamond shape here. And I'm just gonna use my needles, again, just to push the wall in, because what you may find is as you manipulate the wall, it loosens it around the middle. So just keep stabbing in the middle every now and then, just to secure it down again. And I'm just gonna very gradually just maneuver the inner corner as well, the inner downward corner, just so I'm replicating that shape. But the key thing to remember with this classic eye is that you want the inner upper corner to go upwards on an angle and the outer bottom corner to go downwards on an angle. And that really does give you that lovely cute shape then, whilst keeping the rest of the eye slightly rounded. You don't want it to be really harshly angled. You don't want any sort of strong um, lines in it. You want it to be very soft, very rounded, but at the same time you're creating this kind of shaping whereby it's got this kind of slightly sad, forlorn look, if you like. 
So I'm just going to continue shaping the eye. And I just keep checking to make sure that it's looking the same as it is on the other side. Just giving it a good stab down now. So I'm happy with that. So the next thing I'm going to do is add my pupil. So I'm going to take just a touch, just a tiny pinch of white wool bats. I think I'm using a Gotland here, but you can use any wool bats, but try and go for a short fibred wool bats rather than a long fibred wool bats. Um, because what you'll find with the long fibred ones is that you'll get lots of bits of white wool sticking out. So go with a short fibred one. I've just rolled it between my thumb and my finger. And then I'm just going to place it in the bottom inner corner of the eye so he's looking downwards. And then with my needles, I'm just going to very gradually felt that down. And the very key thing to remember with this is you want to make sure that there's a line of brown between the white of the pupil and the white of the face. If the white of the pupil meets the white of the face, you're going to lose that impact. You're going to lose that look. So really make sure that you've got some division there with the brown. And you're just kind of using your needles in a way whereby you're kind of doing them, you're stabbing in a circular, a circular way to create that dot. Okay, so that's the pupil added. So the next thing we're going to do is take another tinier pinch of white wool bats, smaller than the first one, and this is going to be the light in his eyes. So again, I'm just going to rub between my thumb and my finger, and then I'm just going to place it on a slight angle just above the pupil that we've already added. And then just felt that down so that it's about probably about a quarter of the size of the pupil that we've just added a moment ago. So you want to make sure that you have brown between the two so you can see the difference. You've got some differenti differentiation. That's definitely not a word. Differentiation? No, I don't know. Can't remember. You, you can get what I mean. You, you want to have the you want to be able to see the difference between what's the pupil and what's the light in the eye. So just be patient with this and just make sure that you've got the, the smaller appearance to the light. So the next thing I want to do is add some facial lines to our face. And I'm going to do this by felting in a slight slope in the bottom outer corner of the eye. And this just adds again a bit of character to the face. So it's just making, making a bit more of the eye, adding a bit of a line as if the face is, you know, moving. It's like it's smiling or it's frowning or something like that. Obviously, our faces aren't completely line free. They move around unless, of course, he has had Botox, in which case his, his face will not be moving. Um, but, but, you know, you want to make sure that there's lines and things in faces just to give them that element of realism. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to add some eyebrows for him now as well. Again, just to, to really get those key facial features in that we really recognise when we look at a face. So that when people look at your, your sculpture, whatever you're making, um, they really identify with it. I find that if you don't add eyebrows to something, unless it's something that doesn't have eyebrows, it doesn't really resonate as much with people. Whereas an eyebrow really does help people to resonate with the piece. Um, I know it sounds a bit odd, but that's what I find. So, so eyebrows work for me, but, but go with what you think and what works for you. So I'm just adding the second eyebrow in here and I'm going for probably like two lines of felting just to get it nice and thick rather than just one line, just to really get that eyebrow indentation in there. So, and I, I like to have it slightly thicker in the inner part of the eyebrow and then it narrows on the outer part if that makes sense but there you go that is your classic eye finish so i really hope you found that helpful i really hope you incorporate that into your needle felting projects in the future and i will see you tomorrow with more needle felting hints and tips until then if you enjoyed this video please like it please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because i'm posting three days a week at the moment on friday saturday and sunday and i'm always posting lots of helpful needle felting hints to help people on their needle felting journey so i will see you tomorrow with more hints and tips. Until then, have a great day. Bye.